Hello everyone! Today I'll be using a note taking app called Goodnotes 5 to introduce you to how to make red edit marks. It's called proofreading or annotations, but it's basically a way to make notes or mark any parts directly on a PDF document you want to fix using a red pen. You can do this not only on a PDF file, but also on a JPEG file as well. Today I'll be using a useful feature in Goodnotes 5 and introducing you to how to add annotations efficiently. And even if you've done something like this before, I think you'll find something new today. And if you happen to have never done something like this, where you always print out any PDF documents you receive, uh, read, edit marks, scan, and send it over email again, I believe there are some people out there that still do this, but if you happen to be one of them, please watch this video. You have one third of work following my method, so please watch this video and try making red edit marks with your iPad. When communicating with your customers or your teammates, I assume you use a mail app or a messaging app. But this time, I'm just going to assume you use the mail app to communicate and exchange PDF files. And since I use this app called Spark, I'm going to open it right now. When I look at my mails, a PDF file is attached like this. So I'll tap it and open the file. Right now, I have a PDF file of iPad Mail Manual open right here. This was created by one of my members, Itokuni-san, and he did it in a PDF format. So here, I'll talk about what to do when I want to add corrections or make red edit marks. Actually, there is an annotation option in Spark where you can make red edit marks too, but I always forward the file to GoodNotes 5 and annotate it over there. So to do that, there is a share button at the bottom right, so click on it. And here you should see some apps. So look for GoodNotes 5 and tap it. And if you can't find it here, tap the three dots icon and you should see a list of apps. So select GoodNotes 5 from there. They had a share button at the bottom right corner in Spark and you should be able to find it somewhere in any May apps too. So make sure to open the PDF file and look for the share button. So the very first step to do is to open your PDF file, find a share button, and bring it to GoodNotes 5. This way you have GoodNotes 5 automatically. So select the folder and tap OK. Now I have my PDF file open like this. And this is where I'll start making red edit marks. Right now I'm scrolling through the file vertically, but you could scroll it horizontally. Click on the three dots at the top right corner, and one of the options should say scroll direction. So click on that, and select horizontal. And now you should be able to scroll through the pages from left to right. I personally like to scroll vertically, especially when I have a stack of PDF files, so I always set it vertically. Regarding the tool we are using this time, we'll use a ballpoint pen that can be found here. As you tap pen, you can select a brush type, so select a ballpoint pen. We'll also be using the eraser, a marker, a lasso tool, as well as the image tool. On the right side, you can also change the color or thickness of the brush, so adjust them according to your preferences. Now we'll begin making red edit marks from here. If you want this illustration to be bigger, for instance, circle the image and say something like make it bigger. For paragraphs, if you want this part to start a new line, for instance, add a mark that indicates a new line here. Or you could also write add more text here if you want them to add more text too. If you feel like text are too small or you find it difficult to add notes, I suggest using a zoom tool. It's this icon right here at the upper left, so tap it and now this blue rectangle box should show up. Anything inside the blue rectangle box will be zoomed in and you'll be able to see here at the bottom, like this. Since the area inside the blue box and the section at the bottom here are linked, if I write something here at the bottom, you should be able to see whatever right here is reflected inside the blue box as well, as you can see. So if you have a hard time reading or text are too small to write, please go ahead and use this zoom tool. From here, it will just be adding red edit marks to any parts I want them to be fixed. 
I recommend this to those who are directors, writers, people working from home, especially nowadays, and teachers as well. By importing your students' projects or reports into the iPad and making red edit marks there, it will definitely help you be more productive. In case you want to highlight any parts, use a marker. Grab a marker and change the color. And as you color over the text, you leave the black text as they are while adding color right behind the text. I really like this because it doesn't cover the text completely, so this is something I recommend too. This is another hack, and I'm going to show you a screenshot feature. There are times where you want to cut out a specific illustration only, like this boy right here, as an example. And this is where the screenshot feature comes into play. While having the lasso tool selected, circle the illustration of the boy here. Once that's finished and selected, it should say take a screenshot of both, so tap it. Now the only area circle should pop up like this, and it will be saved as a JPEG file. And if you tap the share button, options that say copy or save image should show up, so click on copy this time. Then go to the page that you want to paste the image to, and long press the one you copy earlier, and click on paste. Now you have the image of the boy in JPEG on this page. So when you want to swap a specific illustration on a specific page with the one on page 3, for instance, just use this screenshot feature and paste it. This way it makes it easier for others to understand like this. You can also leave a comment saying something like, swap this image with this one. I use this screenshot feature quite often, and I want all of you to make use of it too. This will definitely help you be more productive as well. Once you're done and you've read any marks, the next thing to do is reply to the person who sent you the file. But when exporting a file, from the share button at the top, click on export all files. Select PDF file here, and now you can export it as a PDF file. Then click on export. Now you can choose the app of your choice. Spark in my case as I did earlier. Then you can put the email address here, but this won't let you reply to that person directly and you have to fill in the recipient's email address again. So I don't really suggest following this method. Instead, I'm going to introduce a different way to send your file. So first, go back to the home screen. Then use the split view function to open Spark on the left or right side. Open the email you want to reply to and click reply. Then type in text such as please make corrections, thank you, or something like that. Then you can attach a PDF file. But to show you how to attach the PDF file to this email, there's a check mark button at the top right corner in GoodNotes 5, so click on it. Select the file you want to send and tap the export button. And export in PDF format. Now there should be an option that says copy, so click on it, and now the PDF file has been copied. After that, go to the mail app, long press and click on paste, and you should see the PDF file attached to the email. As I just showed you right now, you can attach your PDF file to your email just by copying and pasting. On a side note, I thought I could just drag and drop the file, but unfortunately Spark doesn't let me do that. There's a chance you'll be able to do it in Apple's email app or messaging app, so if the app you are using doesn't support this function like Spark, you can simply copy and paste the file. By the way, the PDF file I just edited have 4 pages, and I sent all of them. In case you want to send only page 1 and page 3 though, if you send all, you take up more storage, and it could be confusing for others to figure out which pages to be work on, etc. So when you want to specify a page, or you only want to send pages 1 or 3 of the iPad main manual for instance, and send them in PDF format, find this square mark here at the top left corner, and click on it. It will show you an overview of all the pages in the file. So this is where you can choose the pages you want to send. Tap the select button, and here you can select the pages you want to send. 
A、uh, check mark should show up on the pages like this. Then click on export, select PDF, and then hit the copy button to copy. Now only pages 1 and 3 are copied, so go to the mail app on your left side and tap paste. You should see the file with the pages you selected ready to be sent. Just like this, you can send specific pages. So, that was all about showing you how to add red edit marks to the PDF file. Things are going to be a bit more advanced from here, where I will talk about how to add annotations or red edit marks to the JPEG file or images. So, I run my online community called iPadMate, and I have members submit a sort of homework or assignment every week. And for each assignment they submit it, I always add comments or red edit marks to give them some advice. There are a few tips you can use when doing something like this, so that's something I will talk about from here. If you click on New, an option called Note should pop up, so click on that to create a new note. Today I'll be using this blank, which is a plain piece of paper with no real lines. A blank white screen should show up, and I'm going to insert an image here. To do that, click on the image button located at the top. So tap it, and a list of pictures from your camera roll should appear in little icons on the right. So click an image, and it should be placed on your canvas like this. If you want to readjust the size after you laid out the images on your canvas, while the image button is selected, touch the image to activate, and now you can adjust the size as well as the position again. So you could display images like this, and you can make red edit marks or comments saying like, you should do this more, or this is cool, etc. In case you want to adjust the position of text added, use the lasso tool. Click on the lasso tool, which is located in the middle of the toolbar, circle around the text you want to move. Then you'll be able to change the position of the text like this. So even if you think you aren't good at writing notes nicely, or they don't look good, you can always go back and adjust them. By the way, for this lasso tool, select and touch the area like this, then an option called color will show up. With this color, you could also change the color later on. This can be really useful, so please remember how to do it. Now, here's something I want you to pay attention to. But let's say you want to move the red lines or text place on top of the image, like this red line here on the left. But if you use the lasso tool and move the red line, the image gets moved at the same time. I used to find this a bit annoying actually, wanting to move the red line only. But there is a solution. As you click on the lasso tool, many options show up, including handwriting, image, and text box. And ones with a checkbox will move. So if I get rid of the check mark of the image, it won't move anymore, while handwritten lines and text box will still move, as you can see. For this one as well, if I select the text, only the text will move, and the image will be fixed to where it's positioned. So if you ever encounter a situation where you don't want to move an image, you can use the lasso tool and remove the check mark for the image as you make edits. On the other hand, if you get rid of the check mark for the handwriting and keep the image option turned on, the red text written will move and you'll be able to move the image only. So just like this, you can change the position or size as much as you want later on using this lasso tool. So make sure you remember how to use this lasso tool. It's very useful. At last, like I did earlier, I will attach this file to an email. But instead of sending it as a PDF file, I'll be sending it as a JPEG file this time. And this can be done a lot easier. Open your mail app on the left first, then go to your good notes on the right side and tap the button with four small squares. Drag and drop the second file to the mail app, and now you have the JPEG file attached like this. Apparently, I can drag and drop to attach a PDF file, but it works with a JPEG file. You can use this for other messaging apps and communication tools like Slack, 
So I definitely suggest you remember how to attach a file using the split view function. Okay, that's all for today. What do you think? Making edits using iPad can come in really handy in many ways, so you could use it for your work or personal use. On a side note, I have some good news to share today, which is that now my iPad Make community has over 1,000 members. Thank you so much, everyone. It's been six months I've started this community, and I've been working hard thanks to my members, and I've finally reached a milestone. I believe that many of you are stuck at home due to the coronavirus, and I want to encourage everyone to do something creative at home using the iPad with us. So if you're interested, come check out my community. In my community, there is always something fun going on. We communicate over the app called Slack, and it's super fun just seeing comments on my members and their updates. So if you like, please join our community. Alright, that's all for today. I hope this video helps you be more productive working from home with the use of making red edit marks for your work. Let's take this time to learn and master the use of the iPad and work hard with Amity Sensei. I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching and bye bye!